All right, uh, hey guys, um, thanks for watching. I just wanted to make a video about um, an idea that God gave me basically behind the song. What's behind the songs that I'm writing? Um, and just to just to kind of share uh, unscripted, not gonna, I wrote this whole long thing, but, and I'm not gonna sit there and read through it. I, I wanna be honest, I wanna be heartfelt. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And um, it, it's about the songs that I write, the behind the scenes. And I want to I want to share. No matter what song it is that I'm writing, I hate to even say say that I'm writing it as if I just came up with all these ideas and I'm just coming up with all this stuff. No, I, I want to talk about how God inspires us, and through that inspiration brings life birthing life something new um something new that comes from god that doesn't come from us and that's where these songs originate from that's that's where that's where they're birthed from and so uh this song was no different and something god showed me a long time ago was whenever i'm writing these songs and people listen to these songs what they're listening to what they're sitting down at a table if you will, and partaking of is leftovers. And at first that seems kind of a strange thing to call them, but, but honestly that's what they are because these songs are coming from my own table of intimacy with God, my own relationship with God, me knowing Him and Him knowing me. And <clears throat> that's the basis, that's the foundation of where these songs come from. Whether it's this song, uh, Letting Me Save You, or uh, songs I'm going to be working on and releasing soon. Basically, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Is These are merely leftovers. And my challenge, before I get into this song behind the scenes, my challenge to you is have your own freshly prepared meal of intimate relationship with God yourself. And don't depend, <clears throat> don't depend on leftovers from others, right? Leftovers, whether it's songs that we love, worship songs, or just, you know, inspiring songs that, that, that are about God, basically love songs to Him, <clears throat> whether it's that or, or even, even the Bible, even Scripture. And have your own moments with God. Have your own personal moments sit downs at these incredible well thought out and in in detail mind you prepared meals that God has for us every day have your own and don't depend on other people's leftovers all that to say understand that this song that I wrote and the other songs and even these messages I give and, and all the stuff merely leftovers there's no other way to say it. That That's it, right? Merely leftovers that come from my own intimacy with God in relationship with Him. So anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, behind the song, Letting Me Save You. Um, like I said, I had written down this whole thing. And, and I don't know, maybe over time I'll share maybe a little more, maybe not. But what I want to do is just share from the heart where this song came from. So... Um, I, I want to start off with saying that obviously this song is God speaking to us, right? And so as he's speaking to us, there's a message there. And that message is, in this case, in this song, a challenge. But I, I love how God wanted to challenge us with this song and this message. I love how it was so, um, I hate to say beaten around the bush, <clears throat> But it was very much, it was very much indirect in that he's not necessarily accusing us of anything, but merely stating facts and truths about himself. I love that. And in that is the challenge. In that was the challenge of, here's God giving us this message from the very beginning right 
from the very beginning telling us what he wants. And I think that's so special. Um, let, let's talk about him as our father. I think that's so special that he would sit us down as children, look us in the eyes, or in this case, uh, you know, whispering to our ears or talking to our ears or our hearts, really, but us hearing him, he would sit us down and just tell us what he wants. That's so much different than a command, right? Whenever, whenever I've tried the command approach with, let's say, the, my toddlers, Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, especially when there needs to be correction, especially when they're going their own way and correction is the only way that they get back on online to where they need to be or where they should be, right? Where they're better than, than misbehaving or they're better than whatever they're doing wrong. They're better than that. But sometimes what it takes to realign them is not, not the command approach, not don't do this, do this instead, but rather having that sit down moment where everything gets paused. And for me at times, it's almost a des desperate attempt to try to get them to understand what I'm saying is wisdom. What I'm saying is good for them. It's what's best for them. And so in a, in a desperate attempt, sitting them down and just saying, this is what I want. I want you to do this. And then I explain it, right? What, one of my favorite lyrics from that song that I just thought of right now was, um, don't learn the hard way, right? I love that because that, that speaks of a father's heart, just um, just kind of nutshelled right there. If you could nutshell a father's heart, it's, hey, don't learn the hard way. For us earthly fathers, it's please don't make the same mistakes that I made, right? I know that's, <laughs> especially with my oldest son, who is uh, a little mini me, like, man, that, that is a fear that I have had to deal with, um, constantly of not wanting him to learn the hard way. Like I had to not wanting him to make the same mistakes I did. And so, um, but, but yeah, that's, so that's such a father's heart though, to say, Hey, don't learn the hard way. Trust me, listen to me, listen to what I'm saying, listen to what I'm wanting and trust Right. Well, I think a lot of times we mistake faith with trust. Faith comes from Him. It doesn't come from us. What's our part to play is trust. We have to trust God. And through that trust opens up the relationship, opens up communication. And that allows us to hear from God. And faith comes by hearing the spoken word of God. Right. Think about, again, in, in my shoes or, or your shoes or, or being an earthly father or just an earthly parent right? If there's no trust, it doesn't matter what you tell them. That communication has been cut off, right? And so we don't want to be the enemy. God doesn't want to be our enemy where we cut off lines of communication because that's what you do with an enemy, right? Or, or when you're attacking an enemy, you want that enemy's lines of communication cut off. And so what God wants is the opposite. He wants there to be trust built. And so, I, again, I love the humility of God's approach with this song and this message is, I'm God, I created you, I deserve better, but I'm going to meet you where you are. I'm going to meet you right where you're at. I'm going to meet you at your lack of trust and your doubt and your lack of faith because there's a lack of communication between me and you. I'm going to meet you where you're at. And I'm going to sit you down and I'm going to just simply tell you what I want. And man, that, that's a game changer because, you know, uh, as mind blowing as it is, relationship is the key. Relationship is the key. Jesus died on the cross for relationship, not for us to behave, not for us to say yes, sir, to commands. Right. And again, I love God's approach with this song, but, but again, this song is merely a reflection of, of how God walks with me every day. And if you're really walking with Him in a relationship, you can relate. You can actually understand what I'm saying because He doesn't just sit there and command us all day long, right? Because that won't work with us. We're far too stubborn and prideful and, and, and all the things. And so, um, 
anyway, so that, that that's a big part of this song is uh, the approach to that. Um, I want to talk about letting me save you the, the whole title and basically the underlying message throughout the whole song is letting me save you. Uh, I want to, I want to, um, I want to talk real fast about, not real fast, but I want to talk about why, why there's, again, this not coming for me, but God's message to me at the time. And then now to you is why it's letting me save you. You got to think like who, who wouldn't, who wouldn't just let God save them, right? <laughs> but uh, I, I just thought of this, uh, it's kind of cheesy, but the whole uh, metaphor, I think it's a metaphor, uh, basically the whole story with the moral of the story, that's the principle of what I'm talking about. The whole story of the guy who's, who's um, I guess his ship went down, he's in the middle of the ocean, and he's crying out to God, God save me, God save me, <clears throat> knowing that he's not gonna last out there forever. Uh, three boats come. One boat comes. He says, no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. God's going to save me. No, you know, so that boat leaves. Another boat comes. Oh, no, no, no. I'm good, man. I'm good. God's going to save me. You know, and the third boat comes. And uh, well, anyways, he dies, gets to heaven. And God's like, bro, what happened? Like, come on, man. I sent you three boats. And, you know, the uh, again, that moral of the story, which aligns with the principle that 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 is what we're talking about here is, Basically, um, we <laughs> we in our pride. Now it's it's tough because I do want to say as a sort of disclaimer that um, it's not necessarily that we intentionally. Right now, that would be foolish, and I, I think n n not to say that's out of our foolish reaches because uh, our foolish reaches are almost boundless. But um, I, I do want to say that it's not necessarily we do that on purpose. Like we're just intentionally say, like, like that guy in the ocean, he's not intentionally giving up a ride, um, just to make himself feel strong or capable. No. And so that's not what I'm, that's not what, what goes down. What it's more like is, it is the ignorance of, well, I didn't realize how prideful I was being. Wow. I'm being super prideful. And, and think about all pride is, is, um, it's just pushing God out. We need to stop making pride into this whole thing. We give pride oh, too much credit. Uh, we need to start realizing that all pride is, is us pushing God out. And so whenever we push God out, what we're doing is we're saying, I can save myself. And so when, when the message of this song is saying, letting me, when God's trying to tell us, let me save you, the whole thing behind that was God trying to tell us, let me save you. Stop trying to save yourself, right? That's the problem, the underlying problem to everything you're facing, everything you're dealing. And think about that. Think about everything from control, right? Us trying to control things, our tenacity to, to hold on to everything and, and be the puppet masters and, and captains of our own lives. And, and we want to call the shots. That, that's the problem learning the hard way my kids would never learn the hard way if they let me save them if they let me be the one that's the captain let me be the one it, it amazes me i've had to uh teach my kids recently about having to let daddy lead because <laughs> because we'll be walking and, and and they may know that we're heading to the car or we're heading out of out of the house out of the front door they may know an idea of where we're headed but think about how tricky that gets with us and God, right? We may think, oh, well, it's good to do this. I want to do good things for God. And God's like, well, there's good things and then there's my things, right? And here's what that means. It seems uh, paradoxical, but it's there's things that we think are good and then there's things that God thinks are good, right? And that's that's a, there's a sobering difference there that we need to that we need to be very careful because that can get really dangerous going our own way well a lot of times it doesn't look like us just being addicted to drugs or us like hurting somebody or does that make sense a lot of times it looks very harmless like just doing some good things here and there on our own and pushing god out well guess what remember what that is that's pride Right. And so, again, God's loving approach with this, but also 
him being sort of blunt at the end of it all. At, at, at the end of all the fluffing he did to make it as, as comfortable as, of, a, of what's really meant to be kind of a punch in the gut or a slap in the face, because let's face it, that's what we need as humans, right? It's, hey child, let me save you. At the end of the day, stop trying to save yourself and let me save you instead. Let me be the one. Let me be the one to save you. Right? I love when my kids come up to me and say, Dad, that holds you. Dad, that holds you. I love that because that's them surrendering that, that, that to me. That's them saying, I'd rather you be the one to, to comfort me, to take care of me, to hold me. Right? Uh, you know, what do we do in church and worship? We're, we're lifting our hands or, 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 or I should say if we're not doing that, well, why would some people do that? Well, it, it's that act. It's that physical act, again, wired in us as uh, from when we were children as sort of a stamp, uh, a proof that we are children. That we need someone else to save us, and so I. Anyways, I, I don't want to keep beating on that. Um, but man, that is obviously that's the title of the song. That's that's basically sort of the nutshell of the song, um, and that's that's the heart. That's the heart that I felt that I saw as I was writing this song from the Father to us. That message. That's really what what is the heart of the song. And so uh, I would say the. Kind of the the next part I want to want to mention that I can see some people um, not really understanding. Um, and I'm not assuming that. Uh, I'm just from from my experience. Um, the the end, towards the end of the song, right before it ends, I go into this sort of um, <clears throat> this alternate ly- lyric um, a, a last part of the song and. And it's basically God telling us, "Don't come with all your little sacrifices, right?" Um, and 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 it's you know from from the scripture that says obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, of course, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what it says. Uh, I love how we get so caught up in these translations that that don't even tell half of what the scripture is saying, anyways. <laughs> but anyways, all that to say, sacrifices are uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Again, that's going back to the whole pride thing that I was talking about. Uh, how God wants us to to do do it His way. That's obedience, instead of trying to sacrifice our own good things in our own eyes, right? Anyway, so towards the end of the song, again, I love the brutality, but also the gentle brutality of of God's truth bombs. That He's again like a good father. A good father is not going to just tell us what we want to hear. A good father is going to tell us the truth. He's going to tell us how it is. He doesn't care if it hurts our feelings, if it saves our lives, right? So that, that's kind of a big thing. But anyways, don't come with all your little sacrifices, right? They mean nothing if not one of those is your heart. Again, um, you know, your, your, your mouth is saying the right words, but your heart is far from me, right? Again, scripture, what God is wanting us to, to understand, a desperate message to, to get us to, to, to relinquish and kill our pride. Let it die. Lay it down on the altar. You want to make a sacrifice? Sacrifice the things that are getting in, in, in between you and God, right? That are getting in front of you and, and the plans that God has for you. Sacrifice that. But what God is saying is all your little good, good deeds, all your little performance, behavioral, um, you know, Boy Scout badges that that you're putting on yourself because you you're trying to again earn your own you're back in the old testament trying to earn your way back to me he's saying give that all up i don't want it don't give it to me don't don't come to me with that right if my son kept coming to me with with ways of trying to please me or trying to earn my love or i I would correct him i would say son you could you could make a mistake and i could be angry at you and i still love you and you can still come to me because you're my son. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You don't have to earn that. It's already there. It's it's there whether I like it or not, or whether you like it or not. And, and that's, again, God's approach with us is a father's approach. He's the best father, right? But it's a father approach. And so I love those lyrics that it ends the song like that. Almost like God saying like, okay, if that whole song wasn't enough, here, here's something that'll maybe stir you up a little more. That'll tip your boat over and, and you know, uh, flip your world upside down. Your little 
Old Testament religious, like trying to earn, earn your keep kind of world, your performance driven, blah, blah, blah. Let me turn that upside down. Let, let me, again, give you the sobering truth of, hey, stop coming to me with all these little uh, earnings and, and ways that you think you have to sort of jump through hoop after hoop to get to me. No, I don't want it if it's not your heart. What does that mean? Stop being dishonest with God. Right? For me, for you, that's what God's saying. Stop being dishonest with me. Stop coming to me and, 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 and BSing your way to, to feeling better about yourself because that's doing nothing. And, and every time we do that, we're pushing God away. That's pride. And so rather than that, basically that message throughout the whole song, but especially towards the end is you don't have to earn it. And I don't want it if it's not your heart. You know, if it's not who you are, right come to me as you are it's not some cheesy thing that we hear in church or that we've heard growing up it's not it's it's truth and it's what god wants please hear that it's what god wants right it's what he wants like i said at the beginning this whole song was basically him sitting us down and saying this is what i want what you do with that is 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 on you. That's your responsibility. That's your choice. I created you with a free will. You get to choose. But I'm going to sit you down and I'm going to tell you what you want so you have no excuse. And I love that. That's what a good father does. He says, here's the truth. Here's your options. It's your choice. But brutally and, mo- and most honestly, here, here's the truth. Boom. A, a, a good and loving father would do that. And the best father will ever know does that with us um so yeah uh all that to say guys that that is just i mean gosh there's so much like i said i wrote this whole thing there's so much more to this song to unpack and you know what i actually like that i'm not going to sit here and spoon feed you or anyone else all of that i want again i want you to not want leftovers no more begging for leftovers if that's you and if it's not great but Uh, I've seen too many people chasing leftovers, right? And like a drug, having to be addicted to these leftovers to to survive, to keep their heart alive. Whenever God's right there with you, man, He's right there with you every day, all day long, for you to have your own relationship, for, for you to have your own experiences like what I'm sharing now, where God showed you something, where He spoke to you, where He gave you a vision of something, or, you know, all of that doesn't come from getting leftovers from getting someone else's vision, someone else's lyrics from a song or or a preacher's message, right, from church. No, all that stuff is just going to cut the the legs right from under you and you're going to stay a a, a baby believer, right, your whole life and you're going to stunt your own growth and that's just the brutal truth, right? And so here's the challenge. Go get your own steaming hot meal from God that'll change your life forever that that brings permanency and not um, not a temp temporary fix that you're just gonna have to go get another temporary fix uh, you know for some people that's what church is right and that's that's wrong that is so wrong we are the bride we are his church we are the church right we are and so what's the missing link it's God <laughs> isn't that ironic so uh, anyways, I won't get into all that. But anyways, all I have to say, uh, guys, this is behind the song for letting me save you. Um, thank you for watching. And uh, man, like I always say, make time to get away and get along with God. So until next time, see ya. i